you make the experiment of flipping a coin on your table and you're proving that the universe is symmetric because of her thinking. Hello everybody, in this video I'm gonna talk about the smartest and at the same time most discriminated human ever. So I think you should uh, get to know to her. She was Hemi Neuter. Have you ever heard of this name? Maybe no. And if you didn't, you should absolutely get to know how amazing she was. And if you don't know her name and you ignore, you're discriminating this woman. Now, my way of paying respect to her is to try to teach you her amazing brain, what she was able to think. Because if I tell you the story of her life, she was from this city and then she moved to that city. I mean, yeah, fine, but if I manage to let you understand how deep, complex way of thinking she, she was able to create, let's say, such an amazing idea, then you will say, wow. And then, so I'm challenging myself to try to take one of the most complex ideas ever created by human brain and make it understandable for everybody. This is a big challenge for me, but maybe a big challenge also for you. So please try to keep attention. I will try not, of course, to make it too boring, in as simple words as possible. In order to understand our idea, first we need to understand very well two concepts. The symmetries, that probably you already know, but and the complex numbers, that actually are not complex at all. I don't know why they use this name, they are simple. When you understand that these two stuff, then we can go to our amazing idea. So symmetries are something that we have in our mind. This, for example, we are more or less symmetrics. Like this side is, should be sim the same to the other. Our ends are symmetric. We uh, love to build stuff in a symmetric way. So for example, you know, we make a building and a garden, they are equal one side to the other. We love to observe the nature in our symmetry. So for example, this guy was taking photo of us, uh, the snowflakes uh, and they entered the history because we love them, so they're so beautiful, come on. But this is not the end of the story, so let's focus a bit more. So here we have a triangle. There is a symmetry along the vertical axis, right? If you see, this side and the other side are the same. We have one axis of symmetry. We can take, of course, a square. Now, the square has an higher degree of symmetry because actually, yes, you can look at this side and say left and right are equal, but you can also look in this way, top and bottom are equal. But you can also look at them right in a diagonal. There is a, as well symmetry, another axis of symmetry, but we can do more. We can point something here, make a rotation, and yeah, okay, and, get, and goes back to the origin. And another rotation, and goes back to the origin. So we need to understand that the triangle has a lower degree of symmetry than the square, and uh, this is very important because, for example, uh, if you make molecules, they have somehow the atoms like a triangle. The properties of the material will be different than if you have uh, a molecules where the atoms are disposed on, a, uh, on the corners, for example, of a square. And that's why actually we observe the snowflakes with this shape. Anyway, we can take another object, the circle. Now, the circle, in principle, has infinitum axis of symmetry, right? If you cut it in this way, one side and the other are the same. You can choose this direction, you can choose this direction. So this specific object has a very high degree of symmetry. Actually, you can also point it here and rotate. Stays always the same if I'm able to move the paper in the proper way. This has what we call an infinite amount of symmetries and we call it continuous group of symmetry. That's a long story, complex math. But the point is, uh, when you have uh, this kind of symmetries, or this one, we call it a discrete, we can do fancy stuff, but we don't really need them for uh, our next discussion. We, re we need the continuous symmetries, where you have an infinite amount of possibilities. Keep this in mind. So, symmetry is done, well done. Now we, we have to look at the not so complex, complex numbers. For many physical problems, uh, I talk about quantum mechanics uh, or, uh, for example, in electronics, uh, music, waves uh, in general, wherever. This angle 
doesn't really matter for the final calculation. You can change it and the result is the same. We call this phase, okay? In many situations it's negligible and you can ignore it. But now, if I can ignore alpha, meaning I can use the z in any direction, and what do I get? Do I get the complex number retrieve the symmetry I told you before? This symmetry, right? You can go on rotating this one for any alpha, the point will go around in a circle and you get this. So the complex numbers, in many situations, they have this continuous symmetry that is a, a circle. Let's keep this in mind, we are almost there. Now I can announce you the genius of uh, Miss <laughs> Emmy. Neuter. Neuter. So many people, they don't know science, but they like to show themselves as school. They cite, oh, nothing can be created, and nothing can be destroyed, everything transformed. And they pretend to be scientists. Okay, this was, uh, this is, let's say, a statement that is a bit overstated, but let's say it's a generalization of a discovery, let's say, by Lavoisier. And he was talking mainly about chemistry, where you make reactions, you take some elements, they transform and you get some other elements. But many people consider this as a, a fundamental principle, something that we have ac to accept blindly. Now, Emmy came and said, guys, you're wrong. This is not something fundamental that we have to trust. It is fundamental, but we can prove it because this is a consequence of other stuff. And in particular, it's consequence among the other stuff of a symmetry. So everything I told you before can be taken much further. Every time you have a symmetry in the nature, something must be conserved. And this is going way beyond my words. Let me try to explain you with examples. Let's try to use your imagination. Okay, I know it's a YouTube video and every time you see animations, but I'm not able to do them. Or I want to you exercise your brain instead of watching. Close your eyes. Uh, imagine now, with your eyes closed, that you are in the space, out with a spaceship, and you look out of the window and you see darkness with stars far away. Now, those stars are so sparse around you that they, everywhere you look at, they look the same. Now, if you start moving with your spaceship for a while, not you will see that maybe the stars appear in a different positions, but on average it's the same. So we can say the universe is the same even if you move from one place to the other. In physics we call it uh, translational invariance. Now the fact you observe the universe that is the same, no matter if you stay here or there and you move, and gives uh, that something has to be conserved because the universe is symmetric under translation. Translation, I mean, you move from one place to another. And what's the quantity that has to conserve? Is the momentum. Now, if you don't know what's the momentum, is the, the kind of uh, consequence, if you like, of inertia. If you don't know, inertia is a Latin word to say laziness. Now, what does it mean? Think when you are on a car now, and the car starts to move. The car doesn't want to move, and your body doesn't want to move. The engine has to put energy to to make them car start moving and you feel pushback on your seat. Now, when uh, you want to stop the car, you press the brakes, uh, the car wants to continue, okay? Your body wants to continue the move and you have to put energy to stop. So this kind of, uh, the, the, what we are made of, the matter, wants to continue the state of motion or wants to continue the state uh, you are not moving. We can call it like, laziness or inertia. This is a consequence of the fact that the universe is the same everywhere you look at. Stop one man, moment and, and think such a big jump we are doing with our brain, with our thinking, with our... Since I observe the universe that is the same everywhere, then when I want to move, my mass is lazy and doesn't want to change the state of motion. Or if I'm moving, doesn't want to stop. And this is not something mysterious, it's a consequence of the fact the universe is the same everywhere. Now, open your eyes and say, look at me and say, this is obvious, this is intuitive. No, it's not. It's one of the deepest and most complex stuff ever created by human brain. I give a second example. You are still in your spaceship 
And now instead of moving, you rotate. You see stars in one place, then you make a rotation and you see stars in another place. So the universe is symmetric under rotation. And you're like, and so? Well, this means that we have to be lazy, our mass is lazy, uh, even under rotation. So when you take a coin and you start flipping, you have to put energy, the coin doesn't want to flip, right? And then when you start flipping, the coin will go on flipping because it doesn't want to stop because there is some kind of inertia we call, you know, moment, the rotational momentum, okay? And this is as well explained by the fact that the universe is symmetric. If the universe is not symmetric, let's say we, the universe is kind of a box or something like a potato, strand shape, then when you rotate the universe is different, this means this coin will not flip. I mean, you flip, but will not go on. Okay, so the fact you flip a coin and we go on moving is kind of an evidence. Okay, take it with quotes, but take that the universe is symmetric in any direction, look at. Okay, you make the experiment of flipping a coin on your table and you're proving that the universe is symmetric because of her thinking. Let me give you a third example that's for me really boom. I told you the complex number have this symmetric under circle. So in many problems you can take this line and rotate it around and the result will not change. This, as I said, happens in quantum mechanics and in uh, electronics and so on. There is a symmetry. Can you guess what's the consequence of this symmetry? For me it's a kaboom, really. Think about it. The consequence of this is that you cannot create positive or negative electric charges alone. If you create a positive charge, you must create a negative charge. If you want to destroy a negative charge, you have to destroy at the same time a positive charge. This was something, boom, you cannot create an electron like this. And why? Why? Because the complex numbers have this symmetry. For me, it's something like, wow, I hope you agree. I mean, you start with complex number that is go straight and then turn left, whatever. And then you are like, oh, if I rotate around, doesn't change anything. So thanks to Noether's theorem, the electric charge, charge must be conserved. So it means you cannot create a single positive or negative electron. But since we observe electrons and sometimes we create, then it must exist the antimatter. Okay, this is also another consequence that is like, boom. Since we can create matter, thanks to the, you know, and a relation pretty, uh, by Einstein, you know, energy is equal to mass times C squared, super famous, okay? This is saying you can convert energy to matter, but Nature came and said, yes, but careful. Well, not only her, I mean, it was a scientific community, but thanks also to her contribution, yeah, you can create matter, but you cannot create a single electric charge there. So you have energy, you want to create an electron, yeah, fine. You have to create an anti-electron. So here we can see a photo of one of the first experiments, very ancient, I, I don't know where exactly, but anyway, of the creation of an electron and that positive electron that we call positron, positron. So basically, how do I explain it? From the top, you have a bunch of energy going down, okay? And since it's just energy, it's crossing, this is a special chamber where you can observe electric charges moving around. So you have, let's say, for example, a cosmic ray that is a bunch of energy that enter in the chamber. At, the, at some point, this, for various reasons, explodes, creating one electron, and the electron will move as a spiral in one sense because we make also a magnetic field, a long story, anyway. But then you must create also an anti-electron. So you have energy, and now you have electron, anti-electron, they go and they rotate in this way, okay? They, you have a spiral because they lose energy, they slow down until they disappear, fine, forget them. So this is a consequence of the theorem by Hemi. Okay, that's boom, one of the most deep ideas ever. I mean, now let me make clear, this is not her only discovery. She did many other things. But also one of the consequences of this was to solve a problem that Einstein, 
Albert Einstein was not able to solve. So Albert Einstein was there doing relativity and was like, oh, but the energy doesn't work. I'm not able to solve this problem. And then Amy came and said, yeah, done. You think I'm joking, but it's true. Now, as I said, she was super smart, but she was also super discriminated. Now, a small parenthesis. I say smartest. I mean, of course, it's difficult to, to know what does it mean smart. I mean, was it Mozart smart for the music? Or was it smart, smart, I don't know, Newton for the differential calculus and the physics they discover? Or was smart, I don't know, some general that was able to defeat so many enemies with a small army? And the same, of course, applied to women. But also there is a problem that somebody is smart, but we don't know. The person who discovered the fire or invented the wheel, it was smart, but is lost in time. Okay. So it's difficult to say the smartest. Okay. Take it with the quotes. And also there is a second fact. There is, uh, for example, uh, Marie Curie. Marie Curie, she got the Nobel Prize twice. There are not many people on planet who got the Nobel twice. So a woman, Marie Curie, she got it twice. Well, one was for physics, one was for chemistry. I mean, yeah, it's one Nobel and a half, let's say. Come on, I'm joking. Eh? Anyway, she was smart, but she got rewarded. What the story of oh, Amy? I told the one of the most discriminated. So first of all, they were saying, oh, you are a woman, you cannot go to the university. Then she was studying, uh, okay, you are a woman, but you cannot teach at the university. And then she was teaching, not paid. And then she was making scientific discoveries. And uh, finally, people were like, oh, you are smart, come on. Mm. So she was fighting for several years. I mean, let me give you a quote. I mean, some people were saying, should our soldier who fought bravely during World War I come back and learn a defeat of a woman? I mean, this was the way of thinking she had to go through every single day of her life, right? And the answer is like, look, I made a, <laughs> a valuable theorem. But when she finally, after many years of struggling and suffering, she finally proved that she was smart. Oh, you're a woman, but you can think. Yeah. And people start accepting her. Another problem came was Adolf. Adolf Hitler and say, ah, but you are Jewish. Ah. So she was forced to escape from Germany. And uh, Albert Einstein in person worked hard to give her a job in the US. And finally she was happy, but she got an heavy disease and she died suddenly. So, you know, what can go, go, go worse than this? Can go, go worse that you don't know about her, right? You admire other people, you don't admire this woman that did all of this. Eh? I would like now to, to show you a bit more how much she's discriminated. Let's compare Albert Einstein with Neuter. So they were both Jewish, they were both great scientists, they were both discriminated in German and they had to live, right? And nowadays, what do we do? So this is a map of Germany, and this is a place they are named after Albert Einstein. Okay, so you can find some schools, some squares, some statues, some uh, museums, and so on. Fine. Now, this is Germany, if you search, I mean, neuter. And there are many places. Okay, Germans were really sorry for this and they worked hard really to, to somehow fix the issue. But you see there is only in Germany. Well, this maybe is a bit of a problem of Google that when you center uh, your search in a nation doesn't search in the neighbor. So let's move the map. If you go here in the Northern Europe, for instance, you find some places around of different countries, fine. This is what you find for Emmy. So they don't care for her. Let's search somewhere else. Maybe the North country are bad. This is Southern Africa. And you find some stuff for, At for Einstein. Nothing for him. This is uh, more or less Argentina, Southern Brazil. Some places for Einstein, fine. And Amy, no result found. She doesn't exist. What about uh, Southern Asia? Einstein, many places. And surprise, I mean, nothing. Israel, I know that there are many problems and maybe this is not your top priority. But this is all places that you give honor to your citizen that was a genius, Albert. Amy, disappear, nothing. Let's make another attempt. I've, I've been around the map all the world. Maybe it's Google, I don't know. If you know any place, let me know. Okay, this is 
United States and Mexico and a bit of Canada and you see there is places in name of Albert and <gasps> surprise there is one place in Mexico let's zoom in wow a village in the middle of nowhere Academia Mathematica Eminator wow impressive so as far as I know around the globe only Mexico out of Germany as a place an academic school for Emmy. So, you know, I've been searching this school. They have a web a page in Facebook. Let's look a bit, right, their photos. So, you know, okay, it sounds like a place for kids uh, and they try to teach math, but it's actually on air and uh, why not? Come on. This symbol, let's look at it. This formula is a complex way to say the derivative of on time of this quantity is zero. So this is a mathematical way to say this is constant, doesn't change over time. What is constant? Well, something that is falling from symmetry. Let me avoid all the complex math. But you see here, there is E equal to MC squared. That's Einstein, but she contributed to this. Eh? So this school is teaching to you, even if they are in Mexico. And then if you s scroll to the photos, look this classroom. I mean, this room is so small and you see the floor, the stuff around, I mean, they are so poor and probably there is not even a window in this room. So if students go to the school, probably there is very poor village. They do what they can, of course. I mean, you see some other photos of the lesson. Look at the class, come on, poor people. I mean. And this is probably the big room. Yeah, some other class still without windows, right? And this is the entrance. Look at the entrance, this room, because if you fall a few photos after, they use it as a gym, right? So the same entrance place <laughs> during the lesson, they transform, you know, to the place to make gym. Now, what's the message of this school? I mean, for me, it's really, even if you are poor, even if you are a small village in the middle of nowhere, you can do something to change the world. So they are the only one out of, Mac out of um, Germany that they honor this lady. And they try probably uh, in difficult situations to teach kids, but to teach to you now. Okay, so this is the main target of this video. Look at this photo. Also, look back at this village in the middle of nowhere. Right. So it doesn't matter where you are on the planet. You can do something to change it. What can you do? You can go to the city council of your tiny village and tell to the mayor, okay, let's change the name of this road that, that goes to nowhere and honor a minuter, okay? Somebody one day will search on the map and find your village. And for five minutes, you are famous around the planet, but in the long term, people will start remembering your name. You might be living in a big city you, and you can still ask your city council to make a statue for her or the theater to give, uh, or the school, the university, the library, the, the, some museum, right? change your name and, well, maybe it's already named to somebody important, but I mean, they will build a new museum at some point. And you, wherever you are on the planet, you could, okay? You can help to improve the memory of this great woman because currently she's still discriminated. After all she went through, she did amazing discoveries. I mean, the coin goes around so the universe is symmetric, is sphere something or this, the universe is in matrix, so then the coin has to go around such a deep, complex, uh, great admiration for Emmy Neuter. By the way, she, I spent time to learn Neuter, Neuter, so e, 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 Neuter, and you have to, to end the word like you want to say R, not R, but you have to stop speaking exactly on the R. So, neuter, 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 emi, neuter, emi, neuter.